The Persona series has always revolved around making friends, bettering yourself, and being an all-round good egg in the real world so that your powers manifest more prominently when you enter the shadow-filled other worlds. Persona 5 has far more activities and events for you to discover and take part in than any previous game in the series, and that can leave you feeling a little overwhelmed. After all, when you've got the option of deepening a friendship with a member of your team, relaxing in the local spa, or heading out for a bite at the local burger joint, how do you know which option is going to give you the biggest benefit? Well, we're here to help you out with seven must-know bites of information you should master if you want to be the best student you can be in Persona 5. Whether you're a Persona veteran or a newbie, you'll find buckets of worthy information here, so let the lesson commence. To be able to access some social links and events in the game, you're going to need to raise the level of your social stats significantly, i.e. guts, knowledge, charm, proficiency and kindness. While small increases here and there can help, dedicating your time to upping your stats the most efficient way possible is the best recipe for success. On Monday and Thursday, for example, you can visit the bathhouse and get a whopping plus three bonus to your charm instead of the usual plus two. Similarly, heading to the diner in Shibuya and ordering a hot coffee will give you plus two knowledge and plus one guts, a nice mix-up instead of the usual solitary knowledge game. You can make tools at your desk after the first dungeon too, and this will always boost your proficiency by plus two. But as you rank up, the likelihood of it boosting you by plus three increases dramatically. Once you've got a good foundation in every area, you'll want to take on the Big Bang Burger Challenge. There are three tiers to the challenge, and the further you get, the higher your stats have to be, but the bigger the rewards. Completing the first level gives you plus one in everything but kindness. The second rewards you plus two in everything but kindness, and the final challenge rewards you with a massive plus three in all but kindness once again. You'll need to be level four star in everything to achieve this though, so bear that in mind from the outset. Once you unlock Shinjuku, you'll be able to visit the bookstore, and there you can buy the Cinema Treasure Book, which once read, allows you to gain plus three in various social stats depending on what film is played at the cinemas in Tokyo. This is the most efficient conventional way to raise your social stats in the game. Of course, you can also read books, watch DVDs, play video games, but before you do, it's worth keeping an eye out for these. Sure, you can watch a DVD to up your social stats and whatnot, but there are far more efficient, non-time-consuming ways to get ahead in some social areas. For instance, make a habit out of feeding the plant in your room. This can be done once every 16 days and will give you a significant kindness boost depending on the nutrients you use. Early in the game, you can get plus two kindness with the nutrients from the Shibuya Underground Mall flower shop, but later on in the game, when you get to Shinjuku, you can purchase a mega fertilizer, which will give you a plus three boost, rather than the usual plus two. Result. You'll also want to visit the juice stand in Shibuya Walkway every Sunday. You'll get a special drink for 5,000 yen that will up a random attribute by one point. It may be small, but it can make all the difference. Also, you should always have a book on you. Certain days you're lucky enough to get a seat on the train and you get bonus reading time. The same goes for some days in class after you've met certain conditions, which we'll talk about in a second. If you're caught without a book in your bag, this time is wasted. So always carry a good few tomes on you, whether you've bought them from the bookshop or borrowed them from a library. Early in the game, you'll only have a few social links to work on. Get these as high as possible as early as you can so you can focus on the really important links later. Persona 5's links offer far more bonuses than Persona 3 or 4's ever did, so you might want to bear that in mind as you progress. The best links include the teacher Kawakima, who can free up time for you during school hours in the game and give you a massage after you return from the dungeon, allowing you to go out at night and not waste the evening if you've been grinding out battles all day. Battle-wise, eventual squad mate Hifumi can hot-swap allies for you in battle, which is essential in later dungeons, and Futaba can randomly recover SP in battle, block attacks, confer buffs, and so much more too, so you should prioritise those guys. Of course, all social links have many benefits, but the aforementioned three can be a real game-changer. We can't recommend them enough. Tackling the game's dungeons in one sitting is vital if you intend to be efficient with your time. The biggest obstacle here is SP management, as you'll often run out of SP long before you finish a dungeon. On a base level, when you get the chance to attack rather than use a spell, do it. If you have potions to recover health rather than using DS spell for instance, do that too. Knowing ways to regain your SP though can be the difference between one trip to the dungeon or two trips. The best option here is maxing out your relationship with your guardian, Sejiro. He'll teach you how to make coffee and curry that restore SP to one character and eventually all characters. But this takes time of course. If you want a quicker and easier way of recovering SP, maxing out to Kemi's social link allows you to buy SP recovery accessories, which can be a lifesaver. This will take guts from your social stats, however. For quick boosts, and we can't recommend this enough, use vending machines around the school, near your house, in Akibara, in Shinjuku, and nab drinks that recover 5 SP at a time. You can do this once a week per machine. 
It doesn't sound like a lot, but every little helps you earlier on in the game. If you manage to unlock the cinema in Yongen, you'll also unlock a sweet potato vendor who sells SP recovery items, and later on in the game, when you unlock Haru, you can grow SP recovery vegetables too, which is nice. Since time is such a pressing matter in the game, sometimes it's going to be better if you just simply pay to improve your social links or stats. Your first option here is the Meiji Shrine. By paying 1000 yen, you can raise your relationship with a confidant by one stage. It may not seem like much, but if the link in question isn't available that day and you're really keen on maxing them out, it can be a lifesaver. This does take time, however. You can also visit the fortune teller Chiyaya in Shinjuku. As you level up her social link, she'll let you increase bonds with confidants and increase social stat luck, which can turn a plus two event into a plus three event for that day for both social links and social stats. Increasing your luck this way won't take any time, but it will set you back a massive 5,000 and 10,000 yen respectively, so bear that in mind. Early on in the game, you'll only have space for about six persona, but that opens up as you play through the story. During this stage, it's important to know who your links are and what arcana they are, because as has always been the case in Persona games, doing a social link while holding a corresponding persona of that arcana improves your social link drastically. If you go to hang out with Arn, for example, you'll need to have a lover's persona on your person. It'll allow you to form a closer bond with Arn and could even let you move up a rank where before you wouldn't. This is the same for all social links, so bear in mind who you want to spend time with and what arcana they are and grab that persona to give a time-saving boost. We've given you an overview of pretty much everything you need to know about Persona 5 in terms of where you need to be and when, to a degree, but there's something you need to keep in mind too. If you want to get yourself some trophies for maxing out stats, maxing out confidants, completing mini tasks like fishing, baseball and so forth, be mindful that you'll only have until mid to late December to do so. There's a hard cutoff for the point of no return near Christmas, so please, please try and get everything you need to get done in one playthrough by then. But if you do miss anything out, don't worry. There's always New Game Plus.